reported today in The Verge. How universal control on Mac OS Monterey works. The best moment of this year's WWDC keynote was a straightforward demo of a Mac OS feature, universal control. The idea is simple enough, it allows you to use the keyboard and trackpad on a Mac to directly control an iPad, and even makes it simple to drag and drop content between those devices. What made the demo so impressive is how easy and seamless it all seemed. In a classic Apple move, there was no setup required at all. The segment happened so fast that it even seemed, incorrectly, as it turns out, like the Mac was able to physically locate the iPad in space so it knew where to put the mouse pointer. After Zap rudering the clip and asking Apple a few questions, I now have a better understanding of what's going on here. It turns out that the entire system is actually simpler than it first appears. It's essentially a new way to use a bunch of technologies Apple had already developed. That's not a knock on universal control. Sometimes the best software features are a result of clever thinking instead of brute force technological improvements. So here's what's happening in that demo. First, you need to get the iPad and Mac relatively close to each other. Universal control is built off the same continuity and hand-off features that have long been a part of iOS and Mac OS. When the devices are close enough, their Bluetooth modules let each other know. Of course, all the devices here need to be on the same iCloud account for this to work. Then, you start up universal control by dragging your mouse pointer all the way to the left or right edge of your Mac's screen, then a little bit beyond that edge. When you do, the Mac will assume that you're trying to drag the mouse over to another device, in this case the iPad. So there's no UWB location detection, just good old assumption. One note is that if you have lots of compatible devices, Monterey assumes that you're dragging towards the last iPad or Mac you interacted with. At this point, a Wi-Fi direct connection is made and the iPad will show a small bar on the side with a little bump. It's a sort of indicator that the iPad is aware you're trying to drag a mouse into it. Keep dragging and pow, the bump breaks free into a circular mouse pointer. When the mouse is on the iPad screen, both it and the keyboard on your Mac control the iPad. Move it back to the Mac, and you control the Mac. But there's a clever little affordance built into that strange bar. There are a couple of arrows inside it, a hint that you can slide the bump up or down before it breaks free into the iPad itself. Doing that is how you line up the iPad screen with your Macs, so that dragging the mouse between the screens doesn't result in a weird jump. You go through the same process to set up a second device with universal control. It maxes out at 3. If for more on this story, Visit the news article link.